Robbie, what's on your radar? Well, Elon Musk offered to buy the entirety of Twitter, turn it into a private company, and correct what he feels is a waning commitment to the principles of free and open speech has drawn both praise and criticism. So many people who share Elon's dissatisfaction with the platform, including Republicans and conservatives who think it discriminates against provocative right-wing speech, well, they're eager to see Twitter in his hands. At the same time, those in the pro-establishment media camp are worried that the Elon approach would mean more so-called harassment and disinformation on the platform. Twitter's board has given every indication that it sides with the traditional gatekeepers of information and is inclined to fend off Musk's bid. So the company adopted a poison pill approach late last week. This is a well-known corporate tactic intended to thwart a potential buyer. So in this specific case, Twitter would flood the market with additional shares available for sale if Musk's stake in the company reaches 15%. Effectively, Twitter plans to dilute his stake, making it much harder for him to reach the 51% threshold. And if Twitter is ultimately interested in Musk's offer, well, this gives them more time to consider it and time as well to look for other potential buyers. So we have a pretty good idea what the board of Twitter wants. It wants to hold on to its power. Their offer to make Musk a member of the board was probably one born of a desire to control and quiet him. As a board member, he would have an obligation to the company not to disparage it publicly, and thus he would no longer be able to tweet his thoughts about ways in which Twitter should be different. But that brings him to the real subject of this radar. What exactly does Elon Musk want to change about Twitter? If we know that, then we don't have to get into the thornier questions of which group of people do you like better, which governance structure do you think is preferable. Instead, we can just quite literally evaluate the individual ideas for improving the platform. Now, fortunately, Musk has gone into some of those ideas during a TED interview late last week. Let's watch. Well, I think it's very important for uh, there to be an inclusive arena for free speech, uh, where all, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Um, Twitter has become kind of the de facto town square. Um, so uh, it, it, it's just really important that people have the, both the, uh, the reality and the perception uh, that they are able to speak freely within the bounds of the law. Um, and you know, so one of the things that I believe Twitter should do is open source the algorithm um, and make any changes uh, to people's tweets, you know, if they're emphasized or de-emphasized, uh, that action should be made apparent so you can, anyone can see that that action has been taken. So there's, there's no sort of behind the scenes um, manipulation, either algorithmically or manually. Later on in that interview, Musk articulated support for a feature many people have demanded, a Twitter edit button, so you could alter a tweet after you send it. Facebook has this function, so it's workable in some sense. There's a little note that appears showing that you edited it. Musk also talked about removing ads for premium subscribers, providing other perks for those willing to pay more. He also wants to eliminate spam and scam bots, and he's even given some indication he thinks some tweets should be longer, should not be bound by the character count. Now, in my view, many of these ideas, they have merit. More transparency would be a massive improvement. It's critical for the people to know why and how the platform decides to reward and punish certain tweets. So the ultimate goal should be to devolve content moderation to users. Instead of Twitter deciding for you what it thinks you ought to see, what it thinks is dangerous, or what it thinks is true, or what it thinks is safe, the platform should give individual users more options to curate their Twitter experience so that they see less of what they don't want to see, more of what they do want to see. Now, as far as I can tell from listening to him, Elon Musk seems to share that vision. Yet many progressive critics of Musk are acting as if him taking control of the company would be the most horrible thing to ever happen, literally. Here's a salon writer saying Elon Musk's takeover could cause a death blow to the free world. Now Axios says that Musk has gone into full goblin mode and is acting like a supervillain. Here's that. And then, of course, CUNY journalism professor Jeff Jarvis implied that Musk's takeover is like the beginning of World War II. That's how desperate and scared these people are, just because of the mere possibility that a wealthy person with somewhat different politics and a somewhat more favorable disposition to unfiltered speech is going to tweak their favorite toy. And that was just a couple of the examples of the just ridiculous freak out over Elon Musk from people of that ideological uh, bent last week. But I'm reading his ideas and thinking like, okay, this sounds pretty good. 
maybe it won't be, but these sound like good ideas to me. So I don't know what the, I don't know what the freakouts over. Right. And is the left's idea that share, shareholder kind of publicly traded capitalism is the only perfect way to run Twitter? Mm -hmm. Like they're like Twitter as a publicly traded company is kind of forced into dri you know, driving revenue every day, every quarter. Like that's their, that's their legal mandate. And so they then have to then you know, ramp up engagement. They have to do these, you know, they have to, they have to do private algorithms that, that create as much toxicity as possible to try to keep people at each other's throats. Because if you have your engagement numbers, you know, if they dip down in your quarterly earnings call, then your stock price is going to fall. And so, you know, if some of Musk's reforms are going to reduce some of the toxicity actually on, on the platform, that actually could be counterproductive to the share price. And therefore, you could have a shareholder revolt and say, you can't do this. We actually need just people on here killing each other all day long. Uh, if, you know, if you want to inter like introduce something that allows people to you know, curate a less toxic experience, that too could then lead to some less, enga less engagement and lead to the, the stock price drop. And I, I think that is the solution. That is the, rather than trying to decide what all users must see or deal with in terms of harassment, misinformation, what the platform considers misinformation, what even is misinformation, let users set their own preferences to say, here is the threshold of what I am willing to see or what Twitter thinks is bad for me. I want to see it all. And some people might say, no, if Twitter thinks that this is bad, something I don't want to see, then I'm fine, Twitter not showing it to me. Or I don't show me anyone who follows these, pre like that should just, should just devolve to the user. And that way we don't have to have this incredibly fraught, incredibly national political conversation over what Twitter's content moderation policy should be. A very weird subject of debate for like a national political system, but that is our, that, like that's what we're arguing about. In some sense, all of our political conversation is just about what you should be allowed to see on social media, which and, is stupid. Yeah. I, I, and I also think progressives need to do some self-reflection on how they can, on the one hand, constantly talk about how Twitter is a hell site, mm -hmm. absolutely the worst place on earth, making the world a worse place, but don't do anything differently. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. It must be defended at all costs. It's Weimar Germany. Right. All these people like, saying, yeah, this the is the, this is the, uh, the world's going to end if they change something about Twitter uh, a little bit. This hell site that we all say we hate, if you change one thing, if, you, if right. Elon Musk uh, implements these reforms. Now, I, do it's I. Addicts like, worried their, their drug is going to be it, taken. It does feel yeah. like an abusive relationship in, yeah. some, in some ways, like yeah. just clinging to it. Uh, and, and now, do I trust that Elon Musk is actually going to kind of open up the algorithm? I, not necessarily, but I like that he's made the promise. I don't know what I don't know how you can hold it to him if he takes it private. I hold him to it, but yeah, that would be a good thing. Like, open up the algorithm, show people what you're doing in order to manipulate. Like, wouldn't be showing me because I can't understand an algorithm, but somebody that I trust <laughs> will write about it, and I'll be able to understand right. that. So. Those, I mean, and also the trajectory that it's on is not a good one. So it, it's going to destroy itself if it continues along this path. And we've talked before that it basically today would be almost impossible to create a social media platform that will have all the different tribes on mm -hmm. it. That's not like you, you had your opportunity to create that. The ones that exist are the ones that we've got. And if those, if those go away and if those become just tribal areas, that's it. Like we're not going to have a town square. And so it, it is worth trying to keep it. Although my, my colleague at Reason, uh, Liz Wolf, who we've had on the show before, she observed that Twitter is really only a town square in the sense that it's the place I go to watch someone burned at the stake. <laughs> Which that's it's what the town square is for. The town square is long before. All right, our rising panel will join us next and stick around for that.